Welcome once again to Commander by Dana. Today's video was brought to us by Patreon supporter Kiki Jiki. Huge thanks to Kiki Jiki and the rest of my Patreon supporters. Kiki Jiki reached out asking for a goblin deck with a bit of flair. After a long discussion and even longer phase fine tuning the deck, we settled on running Zeatora the Incinerator as our commander. Also, and I know it's annoying to keep hearing this, but statistically, if I don't ask you to like and subscribe, the video gets fewer subscribers. Zeatora the Incinerator is a 6 mana 6 6 legendary demon dragon with flying. At the beginning of our end step, we may sacrifice another creature. When we do, Zeatora the Incinerator deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, and we create three treasure tokens. Now, Corvold Fake Cursed King is a far stronger commander, but is also seen as a bigger threat at the table. Kikijiki and I discussed it, and we both concluded that since this deck is designed to fly under the radar until it's too late for our opponents to stop us, we wanted to go with a far less threatening commander. Also, I wanted to let you know that Kikijiki asked for the deck to have no budget. Some of the cards in this list are absurdly expensive. There are cheaper versions of those cards. If you see a deck that has original duels in it, you can always swap them for the tapped type lands and save yourself several hundred dollars. But some of us have been playing for a long time and own cards that have risen in value. In the early days of Magic, Shivan Dragon was worth a lot more money than a duel land. But before we get to our deck list, a quick word from our sponsor, Ultimate Guard. For the past few years, Ultimate Guard has been hard at work finding ways to protect your cards without damaging the planet, and they have discovered it. Boulders, once made entirely of plastic, are now made of 87% renewable resources. They also come in a variety of sizes and colors, including this new brown 133 card box. If you're like me, you have a ton of decks, want a little bit of space for your tokens in your deck boxes, and don't want those boxes filling up an entire suitcase, then this box is the perfect solution. Find it if your local game store carries the new Return to Earth Boulders from Ultima Guard, or click on the link down below to order yourself one from Amazon. In order to build a functional commander deck, you need lots of different pieces, which is why I try to rely on my handy-dandy checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp, 10 pieces of card advantage, 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, and 1 sudden I win card. Oh, one more quick announcement before we get started. I'm currently streaming with my son over on Musings by Dan as well as Twitch. It'll mostly be Final Fantasy XIV, but you're more than welcome to pop in and talk about Commander. Honestly, about half my streams are talking about manga, anime, or Commander. Our land base consists of Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Cavern of Souls, Three Tree City, Phyrexian Tower, Bloodstained Mire, Wooded Foothills, Burden Catacombs, Marsh Flats, Scalding Tarn, Misty Rainforest, Zeatora's Proving Ground, Badlands, Taiga, Bayou, Blood Crypt, Stomping Ground, Overgrown Tomb, Luxury Suite, Spire Garden, Undergrowth Stadium, Raucous Theater, Commercial District, Underground Mortuary, Bajuka Bog, Four Mountains, Two Swamps, and Three Forests. Like I said earlier, you can swap out the original dual lands for the typed tap lands or even basic lands if needed. For Mana Ramp, we're running Goblin Warchief, Ignoble Hierarch, Black Market Connections, Pitiless Plunderer, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Three Visits, Farseek, Nature's Lore, The Great Henge, Ashnod's Altar, Skirk Prospector, Warren Instigator, and Goblet Lackey. A good mix of on theme ramp and staples, as it should be. Our card advantage package consists of Wart, Bogart Ante, Conspicuous Snoop, Sylvan Library, Rundvelt Hordemaster, 
Goblin Recruiter, Goblin Matron, Patriarch's Bidding, The One Ring, Fecundity, Skull Clamp, Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, and Corvold Fakehurst King. Gotta love drawing a bunch of cards and finding combo pieces. For interaction and spot removal, we've got Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, Assassin's Trophy, The Devil, Deflecting Swat, Murderous Redcap, Bogart Trawler, Soul Shatter, Heroic Intervention, Vandal Blast, and Hull Breach. Lots of ways to keep our opponents in line. Our board wipes consist of the Meat Hook Massacre and Toxic Deluge. Both great ways to clear a board, with the Meat Hook Massacre even serving as a win condition. The core of our deck consists of Goblin Chieftain, Muxus Goblin Grandee, Goblin King, General Crete the Boltbringer, Siege Gang Commander, Grumgully the Generous, Metallic Mimic, Rhythm of the Wild, Goblin Sharpshooter, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Sling Gang Lieutenant, Goblin Trashmaster, Pashilic Mons, Goblin Bombardment, Warren Soul Trader, Goblin Gang Leader, Legion War Boss, Krenko Mob Boss, Putrid Goblin, Siege Gang Lieutenant, and Micaeus the Unhallowed. Supporting our plan, we've also got Doubling Season, Parallel Lives, Bogart Shenanigans, Impact Tremors, and Perforos, God of the Forge. Now that we have our deck list, let's compare it to our checklist. 50 mana sources split between 34 lands, 14 pieces of ramp, 1 MDFC, and our commander. Right on target. 13 pieces of card advantage. 10 pieces of interaction. 2 board wipes. 2 pieces of graveyard hate in Bajuka Bog and Bogart Trawler. 1 sudden eye win card in the Meat Hook Massacre. Ideally, we build up our army of goblins and just overrun our opponents. We have a massive army from our token generators combined with our token doublers, as well as several lords to make our little guys big and scary. But we also have several combos that allow us to win the game out of nowhere. All of them involve persist and plus one plus one counters. Allow me to explain. Persist is a mechanic that says if this creature dies and it had no minus one minus one counters on it, Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one minus one counter on it. Rhythm of the Wild says that creatures we control have Riot, which means they either enter with a plus one plus one counter or they have haste. For this example, we'll be putting plus one plus one counters on creatures. Now, the way plus and minus counters work in Magic is instead of having both a minus one minus one counter and a plus one plus one counter, they cancel each other out. In other words, the creature has no minus one minus one counter on it, so it can come back from the graveyard infinitely. All we need is a sack outlet. Goblin Bombardment, Ashnod's Altar, or one of our goblins that sack other goblins, a creature with persist, and a way to put plus one plus one counters on creatures when they enter the battlefield. We have numerous ways to do all of these things. So our opponents will think we're just a fun goblin deck when all of a sudden they take infinite damage to the face and we win the game. Sounds like a fun goblin game to me. Do you have a goblin deck? Who's your commander? Leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to Meta Your Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash You can have a video made or just ask for help building or tuning a deck list. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Dariah, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Brett, Roxy, Alex, Borgie, Naswin, Conga, Aaron, Chris, Robert, Austin, William, Pye, Kazaris, Booksu, Patrick, Travis, Naffy, Noodle, Tiz, Art, and Kiki Jiki. You guys are awesome. I post new Commander Deck videos every weekday, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. 
Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danan.